Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Apex FPV F7 flight controller and 60 ampere BNL32 4 in 1 ESC. In this quick video, I'm going to go over their features and specs and show you how to install them on this new 5 inch build, which I'm going to test soon after bench testing the new Amax Inno Performante 2207 1950 KV motors. First of all, the packaging is pretty minimalistic. And inside these reusable and stackable boxes, you can find the flight controller and 4-in-1 ESC, which are either available as a set or individually. Along with each board, you are getting four silicon grommets. Along with the flight controller, you are getting a 14 cm long harness for connecting it with the DJI Air unit, which is going to make things easier for a DJI build. And along with the 4-in-1 ESC, you are getting an 8 pins GST harness for connecting it with the flight controller. In terms of features and specs, the Apex FPV F7 flight controller features an F7 processor, 5 full UART ports in addition to UART 4 which is occupied by this Bluetooth model which is going to enable you to wirelessly configure the flight controller over Bluetooth and is going to automatically turn itself off when the drone is armed in order to prevent causing any interference. It features a USB Type-C connector. On the center of the flight controller you can find both MPU6000 and ICM2602 gyro chips. Next to them you can find an onboard barometer. It features a dedicated JST connector for connecting it with the DJI Air unit. Both 5V and 12V BCs. On the bottom side of the flight controller, under the USB Type-C connector, you can find these three pads, which are going to enable you to select whether to power the VTX and camera using VBOT or 12V. In case the center pad is going to be bridged with the left one, they are going to be powered using VBOT, and in case the center pad is going to be bridged with the right one, they are going to be powered using 12 volts. In addition, it has 16 megabytes of onboard memory for storing black box data. It can be powered directly with up to 6S batteries. And next to the 4-in-1 ESC JST connector, you can find matching pads. So in case the connector breaks, you can simply use them. As for the 60 amperes BLD32 4-in-1 ESC, it supports a peak current of 70 amperes for 10 seconds. It features a built-in current sensor, well-separated battery pads that have dedicated holes for a capacitor. All the pads can be accessed only from the top side of the 4-in-1 ESC. And in addition to the 8 pins JST connector, you can find matching pads next to it. The outer dimensions of the flight controller are 37 by 37 by 4.9 millimeters and it weighs 9.1 grams. And the outer dimensions of the 4-in-1 ESC are 37 by 45.7 by 5.1 millimeters and it weighs 14 grams. Now, as you can see, I've got everything assembled on this 5-inch build. The Crossfire Nano Receiver is connected to UART1 and keep in mind that UART4 is in use by the Bluetooth model, so you won't be able to use TX4 and RX4 pads. And I was told by Apex FPV that on the next version of this flight controller, these pads are going to be changed to TX5 and VTX video out, so you'll be able to wire the VTX to the pads on the back of the flight controller instead of the front ones, which can be not convenient in some cases. The FPV camera is wired to the video in, power and ground pads. The VTX is wired to the ground, power, video out and smart audio pad, which is TX5. And keep in mind that you will need to select whether to power the VTX and camera using VCC or 12 volts, as otherwise they are not going to be powered up. In addition, this flight controller features a built-in VTX switch, so when user 1 mode is going to be activated, the VTX and camera are going to be turned off. In this build, I'm probably not going to use a GPS, but in case you would like to wire one, you can do so using these dedicated pads. A buzzer can be connected to these two pads, and on the back of the flight controller, you can find pads for connecting LED units. As for using the Bluetooth module, that's pretty simple. First, you will need to power up the flight controller, then open up SpeedyBee's app, hit the Bluetooth icon. As you can see, it found the Apex F7 flight controller. Hit connect, and now you'll be able to wirelessly configure the flight controller. Now let's see what happens when the drone is armed. So, as you can see, the motors are spinning. I'm hitting the Bluetooth icon, but nothing can be found. And after I'm disarming the quadcopter, the Bluetooth model can be found again. So overall, this is a very capable stack, and I'm looking forward to see how it's going to perform on the upcoming flight video. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. 
If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.